Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we are here with Ben David Gravinsky. He is the writer director of Happily. That movie comes out March 19th on digital and in theaters. How are you, man? Dude, I'm great. Um... I'm sorry that the kitten keeps walking in front of the camera. That's uh, I'm honest. just so excited the movie's coming out. Uh, I love talking about it because I, I like it. So this is just, this is not even work for me. It's, I'm having a good time. That's, that's awesome to hear. Can you tell me about Happily and, and how the project kind of came to be? Um, Happily, I mean, I've been working as a, a screenwriter since 2007 ish uh but i always wanted to direct a movie so i made a short in 2010 and it like went to festivals and some people liked it and i wrote a movie to direct and after seven years of it almost happening i just like i need to come up with something small that i like just as much um because i could spend like you know another seven years trying to get the bigger movie made uh and i wanted to write so like combine two like my favorite types of movies which is i like offbeat romantic movies like phantom thread or um uh wild at heart gone girl stuff like that and i really like movies that feel like 90 minute twilight zone episodes so that's really where this came from was i kind of wanted to hit those two bullseyes of like movies i really enjoy and if it was going to be a smaller movie Whereas stuff I write usually adds like explosions and all kinds of crazy things. I wanted to make sure that the concept of it was something like I really cared about and was passionate about. Um, and that led to happily. So, yeah, it definitely feels like a tonally, it feels like a very Twilight Zoney. Uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. A, a dark, weird, romantic comedy. Why? So I, I suppose that it kind of answers my question, why a dark romantic comedy? You I love movies that are both very romantic, but also offbeat. There's something to me about movies that like capture like real love and romantic elements, but also without being um, like sort of like in a greeting card kind of way. I mean, look, I literally watch a 20 hour marathon of romantic comedies with some of my friends to <laughs> sort of cope with covid and it's really hard to make romantic comedy that i don't like but personally the kind of thing i wanted to make was something that's just more specific and idiosyncratic which uh is a really commercial sell to uh, your viewers yeah about my movie <laughs> well listen i'm not gonna i'm not gonna I'm not going to call you out on loving romantic comedies. I mean, I'm a Hallmark movie fan. During Christmas, Dude, every Christmas, forget. I will literally leave it on. Seriously, seriously, it's 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 pablum and it's comforting. Um, so what what I what I found interesting was the connection between horror. Hey, <laughs> she's biting that my camera cord. So if the camera goes out, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how to discipline. Uh, kittens continue sir you're you're fine you're fine i'm a cat person so it's cool uh what's that connection between horror and romance and comedy what what's the connection and how did you make it all work well for me you know when you're dealing with thrillers or horror movies a lot of like it's really fear of the unknown or fear of what's around the corner and i this is this is a cartoon go oh, away <laughs> and uh and with this i wanted to really have all those feelings but it's about like your emotional paranoia and emotional fears like fears that your friends don't actually like you fears that your marriage isn't working like i felt like there's a way to harness those in that kind of paranoia and use it in the same way um where you're kind of driven you're going along with these characters and you're sort of worried about them worried about where they're going worried about if they can trust the people around them um and all of those tropes and emotional dynamics are in usually these traditional things but i wanted to lean into the unease of it i mean at least on your first viewing of this movie um you should probably be worried for most of it i'd say on a second viewing spoiler alert it's probably just a dark comedy but uh, I do want, uh, I did want to capture that kind of vibe, which also leads into the Twilight Zone thing too. Sure. Uh, yeah, I hope that made sense. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I was, 
it it also I was blown away by uh, Joel McHale uh, and Carrie Bechet's work in it. Uh, can you tell me what you know they brought to the film and how you ended up being able to work with them on this? Uh, yeah, so Joel's agent called and pitched him for the part, and I hadn't thought of it. And I'm a huge Community fan; it's one of my favorite shows. Yeah, and I know all of his work. But then I was thinking of the informant, uh, the Steven Soderbergh movie, and Joel's so good in it in the smaller part as like an earnest FBI agent. And my real feeling was like, this is not anything anyone would expect from Joel. And that's the kind of thing I'd like to see is seeing a guy like that who's usually so good at playing like jerks, play someone who doesn't really have a jerk bone in his body. And then Carrie, like, Hall and Catch Fire is like my third favorite show of all time. Uh, I think she's a tremendous actress. And when someone told me she was available and was willing to read the script, I lost my mind and she read it and loved <laughs> it. And it was a perfect situation because I felt like as a fan of hers, I could kind of channel all the things that I love about her as a performer and artist because it's a really difficult part. Like Janet is has a real journey to her and from scene to scene has to like deal with different emotions and different tones and i just knew that if carrie trusted me and liked the script it would work out um and i just was really lucky because the movie doesn't work if the if the main couple is not what they're supposed to be which is madly in love and you believe it but you're like but how or why <laughs> you know and they as performers just um they really sold that in a way that I, is exactly what I needed. Yeah, the one of my favorite scenes is the liquor store, uh, you know, with the looks on her face and her shock and just oh, really man. good, really good work. That was a really fun night of the shoot, too. I mean, we only had that place for a few hours, but I love Charlene in that. And I love just Carrie running around, freaking out. It's uh, that I, I don't know. I just think that's a fun sequence. Would would you say that's one of your favorite scenes, or do you have a favorite scene? Um, in terms of favorite scenes, I'm still sort of in this glow of I can't believe I got away with making this. So I, I, feel, <laughs> I feel very strongly about all of it in a way that, like, I don't mean in terms of quality. I just mean like I got to make exactly what I wanted. It's up to other people whether or not they think it's good or great or whatever. But uh, I like that scene a lot. Um, I think the thing that I am probably the most proud of, and I don't know why specifically, is I just really like the long sequence uh, at dinner when they're eating pizza and you're starting to sort of get paranoid about people and Tom and Janet are watching from a distance because it's just a scene that could be really daunting because you have 10 people and a lot of things going on. But to me, it feels just very like straightforward. And I really like the montage a lot um, that follows that. But I'm very pro montage. Uh, some people are anti montage, and I guess I could fight them another day. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, yeah. So did did the uh, pandemic affect shooting at all? Or well, the pandemic didn't affect shooting. What well, the pan pandemic affected was I finished the movie right before the pandemic. Okay. Um, and it was supposed to premiere at Tribeca, and then Tribeca got canceled, so we were just in limbo for. I don't know, nine, 10 months, which was oh. not fun. No. And then uh, we decided, okay, well, I will see, I love theaters and I wanted to wait until like everything was ready and we were going to do it. But then we reached a point where we waited like 10 months and I was like, you know what, let's just take this to buyers. And, uh, and I'm excited about our release. You know, we're going to be on VOD and theaters at the same time. Some places have theaters, some places don't, some places are safer than others. Uh, but I'm just glad that it's coming out to the world and people can watch it. You know, it, it, you know, it took me several months to make peace with the fact that the distribution world is going to be a little bit before it comes back. But it's like, what was I going to do? Sit on it for two years until I was sure it could play in <laughs> every multiplex. Do you think, <laughs> you know? do you think that post pandemic, there's still going to be a place for theaters? I mean, there has to be because they mean so much to me personally. So in that sense, I'm not talking about like science or politics or realism. I'm just saying personally, I love the theatrical experience. I love movies. I'm just hoping people want to get the fuck out of their houses and and go have a communal experience. I I hope the takeaway of the last year isn't that this is the best way to do it. Like this would be more fun if you and I were sitting in the same room. This does work. 
mm-hmm. totally cool with it. And it's great to talk about my movie. And I have Zoom movie marathons and play games with my friends all the time. But I want to sit in a theater and like cry at a sad movie or laugh at a funny movie or have that great feeling when you walk out of a movie that you think is brilliant and everyone else thinks is pretentious and they're complaining. <laughs> like, I, I want all of those things. I mean, in this movie too, you know, the dream of this movie is that people see it and have a big argument afterwards. So now maybe they'll just have an argument via text. Like there's equally smart people who have the same view on things who watch this movie and walk away with like very different feelings about what it's trying to say. And I, a theater lobby is ideal for that, but you know, text threads, dude, if people want to argue about happily in a text, go with God. Yeah. My a, a, a theater lobby, uh, you know, uh, a bar afterwards. So, uh, yeah, 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 I, I, I'm, I'm with you there. I definitely hope that, uh, theaters can survive and, uh, it's about the communal experience. So best of luck on this film and, um, happily comes out in theaters and on digital March 19th, starring Joel McHale, Carrie Bechet, uh, and David, Ben David Grabinski. Thank you. It's, it's been a pleasure uh, talking to you. So best of luck. Take care. All right. Great.